Hey everyone, my name is Vince Gelman. Thank you so much for being with me today. I'm happy to be here in Mother Nature creating this video. I just went for a, a beautiful swim in the lake that's literally like eight feet away from me. The water was warm, the water was healing, nourishing, lovely. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to talk about God being in the vowels. God is in the vowels. Is God in the consonants? God is certainly in the consonants as well, but why do I say that God is in the vowels? The reason is, is because there is more breath in vowels. When we, when we express vowels, there's more breath than consonants. There's more exhale. So if we look at the word respiration, in the act of respiration, we are breathing in spirit. So we have the word spirit in respiration. Respiration, re-spirit. We are respiriting ourselves when we are, are breathing. And spirit, of course, is, is God. And we know that that breathing is one of the ways we connect to God. If we slow down, take a few breaths, we connect to our soul. If we work with breath work, for instance, it's a way that we can heal and access our deeper knowing. It's a way that we can connect to God to higher um, wisdom through breath work, for, through working with a lot of breath. We also speak of the breath of life. Breath is really um, so much connected to, to God, um, to life. To source. We resource ourselves, we resource ourselves through breath, through deep inhales. The deeper the inhale, the more we connect to God, the deeper our, our capacity is to connect to the depth of God. And with vowels, we use more breath on the exhale. Ah. Uh, a, E, O, O, right? Not only do we use more breath, but our mouth is generally more open than with consonants. With consonants, for instance, if we look at um, R, R, my jaw is tight. S, S, I'm using breath but my mouth is closed and my, my tongue is rigid. It's, it's pressed forward a bit. With vowels, ah, there's a looseness of the tongue. There's an openness of the mouth and there's a fullness of breath. And so vowels to me are the heart of words, of the heart of language. And we can see that the the um the sound that stands out most or the you could say the syllable and the sound that stands out most and there are many names for god or many names of divine figures is the vowel so what is the strongest sound what is the most pronounced sound in god is it the g o or the d it's the a ah, buddha Krishna, Jesus. In fact, there's a lot of awe there, isn't there? Shiva. So it is the vowel that stands out in these um, names of, of divinity. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's because it's in the vowels that, again, we, we access God the most. We connect most to God. So if we look at a, a child, a newborn child, how many consonants are they using in their self-expression? It's, it's all about vowels. And what do we say about children? We say that they're closest to God. They're closest to God. So when a child is born, it's ah, right? Or ooh. 
So we, and we connect to them actually, that's how we can communicate to children is by using the language of vowels, ooh, ah, e, right? That's, that's the way we can connect to them from our heart is with the language of vowels. Um, I'm not saying we don't use consonants and that we shouldn't use consonants. We may go goo goo gaga and there's a G in there, but really it's the vowels that, in my opinion, express the heart and the soul and the God in us most. And that's how we can really connect to the heart and the soul of a, of a child is through the vibrational breath expression of life that that is found in vowels. So again, children, they start with vowels. They start, that's primary to their development. That's primary to their intelligence. That's primary to, to who they are is, is, is the vowels, not the consonants, not the consonants. It, it reminds me of an article I wrote that, that went viral. It, it, it has been viewed hundreds of thousands of times. It's, it's called the right brain develops first. So research shows that the right brain develops first and the left brain develops afterwards. The right brain to me is, is the playground of life and the left brain is more kind of the, the worker, the, um, the taskmaster, organization, logistics, uh, linear um, logic, and the right brain is imagination and creativity and wonder. It's the playground. And so my premise in this article is that that with the right brain developing first, it's, it's evidence that play is the foundation for academic learning. So play is the foundation for academic learning. If we support children to grow and develop and learn from a foundation of play, and, and there's so much research that proves this, that if we let children begin from a foundation of play in their learning and development, they transition more seamlessly, more um, successfully into academic learning, into reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, so, so what I'm saying to you is that I, another way of looking at this is I, I, I see vowels as being like the right brain and children come in. We come into this world right brain dominant. And one of the ways they measure this is by the amount of blood circulation. There's more blood circulation in the right brain than, than the left brain. And that's how they know. That's one way they know uh, that the right brain develops first. So we come in right brain dominant, which is that um, it's the, uh, again, it's more of a fluid state. It's playful, it's fluid, it's not as structured. And vowels represent that fluidity because they have more breath. Consonants are like structure. They structure the word. Uh, let's look at the word, say, book. So you have a B, B, and a, a K, K, okay? So they're so limiting, they're structures. But in the center, the heart of the word is the vowels, book, uh, okay? But, but it's like the, the consonants are like the rocks to a fire pit. The fire is that feminine um, creative force. And remember the right brain is, is related to feminine. So the fire is that, that, that creative, feminine, imaginative, vital life force. And the rocks are like the, um, that fire pit of rocks is the structure, the masculine that holds that, that fire in place. It's the container. It's the sacred container for the wild feminine. Okay. So B, B and K are like the container. It's like the fire pit for the vowels for the breath of life for God. It's the, it's the container. So one way to understand this and where I'm going with this is that you can, you could look at consonants as being the masculine and vowels as being the feminine, as being the feminine. Now I am, I'm obviously stretching this a bit and I'm expanding this. There's variations, there's nuance, there's complexity, there's 
there's um, different things I am I'm going to miss out on in this because there's there's lots to cover, and one of them being is the fact that the the letter H, which is a consonant, actually has a lot of breath, and your mouth can be wide open. <sighs> But that is actually the only consonant that I think uses uh, a, a good chunk of breath and, uh, and that you can have your mouth open. I haven't found another one <laughs> that, that fits those categories. So what if vowels were um, feminine, vowels represented symbolically the, the right brain, um, and that's where we have our greatest creative expression is in the vowels. Let me give you an example of creative expression. So I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter, I'm a musician. And I like to write songs where I really express vowels, where I elongate vowels. I'm not just going word, 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 but I'm going across the empty sea so i cross i'm not singing very good right now by the way but maybe it's because i'm just doing this off the cuff but i crossed i crossed so i'm elongating the i i'm elongating the o of crossed the empty sea E. So I'm not just saying I cross the empty sea, but I'm elongating that. I'm elongating those words through extending the vowels. And by doing so, I connect more to my heart. I bring more of my spirit into the singing. And I do more, much more than if I simply said, I cross the empty sea. Just like that. But it's by elongating the vowels. I access more breath. I access more of my heart. I access more of my spirit. It's more passionate. Uh, and so that's a way to understand how there's more, there can be more creativity, more creative fire, more creative expression if we, um, if we give ourselves to the vowels more, if we allow the vowels more room to play in our vocal expression. So children are wonderful singers. They, we sing the moment we come onto this planet, don't we? The moment we're born, we sing a song and it's, ah, we're screaming. That's our song. And that's a long, long vowel with no consonants. That's a long, long vowel with no consonants. We're just letting loose in our voice, in our expression. So, vowels are very much, to me, a gateway to our breath and therefore a gateway to God, God, to Buddha, right, to Krishna. So, I'm totally breaking the rules of my own professional filmmaking standards, um, but I'm adding this clip in the middle of the video after completing filming because this just came to me while I was walking. When we, uh, when do we, <laughs> when we are in pure enjoyment, when we are really having fun, how do we express ourselves most fully, most passionately by saying, I'm having so much fun or by going, Yahoo or woohoo, woohoo. That's much more um, spirited, then I'm having so much fun, right? We, we go past the structure of language. We go past the form into the formless, into the formless of breath and that, that vowels express. What about when we are, um, in deep grief, when we're crying, how many consonants are we using when we're crying? It's, it's vowel. Grief is, is, vowels are, are what helps grief come out. We express our sound, ourself. We connect to our heart. We let go through the vowels, through the grief sounds that are expressed through vowels. And what about sex? When we are fully letting go and expressing our sexual ecstasy, we might scream, oh my God. 
but really in my opinion in my opinion it's um it's actually when we moan oh when we really express through moaning moaning how many consonants are there in moaning and really letting go see when we really let go in our expression we leave we leave the realm of consonants and we enter the sacred holy ground of vowels and i'm ending with a video of what i believe to be is a beautiful little toad i don't think it's a frog i'm pretty sure it's a toad oh by the way how many consonants do toads use dot 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 <laughs>